Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad that we're in the house once again. So glad this morning that the Lord has woke us up, started us on our way once again. So glad this morning that God looked beyond our faults but yet saw our needs. Yes, yes. So glad this morning that God decided that he would send his son Jesus to an old rugged cross, but yet allow him to be buried in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day morning, raise him up with all power in his hands. I'm glad this morning that he got up from the grave. And the reason we're in church this morning is because he got up. Had he not gotten up, there would be no reason for us to come to church. Had he not gotten up, there would be no need for us to gather in fellowship. Had he not gotten up, there would be no need for us to show love for one another. But because he got up, you didn't hear that, did you? But because he got up, I've got the victory in Jesus. Victory over death, hell, and the grave. Victory over my enemies. Victory in Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm so glad this morning that we've got a Savior who got up from the grave on the third day morning. Why don't you stand on your feet this morning? Rest on your feet. Come on if you can. As we pray and we invite the presence of the Lord here in the house once again. If we head by all. Focus this morning on the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you again for allowing us to gather here in your house. And God, we are only stewards. We are only servants. Yes. That you've called us to be the people that you would have us to be. So this morning, we realize that we cannot have church unless you come. Oh, yes. So Holy, come, Holy Spirit, come with your quickening power and breathe on these cold hearts of Thanks ours yes. that we may do thy blessed will. Yes. Now, Father, I'm asking this morning that you will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we pray that you would take away any distractions, anything that, that, would, that would hinder us from hearing from you on this day. Yes. Clear our hearts, clear our minds, clear our thoughts that we may do thy blessed will. And now, Lord, I'm praying for my neighbor on my left and my neighbor on my right. Yes. Praying for my neighbor in front of me and my neighbor behind me this morning. That your blessings will fall, will fall upon them this morning. And your blessings will overflow on somebody else. Yes. Lead God and direct us this morning in our worship. And all that we do and all that we say will bring glory and honor to your name. Yes. It is in the master's name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And all believers say amen, 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 amen. and amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. Choir, come on and sing for us this morning. Lead us. You may take your seat. You may take your seat. Yes. You might as well go and start praising it now.
Yeah. What's his name? Jesus. Come on, somebody. What's his name? Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise in his name. Amen. Bless you, choir, this morning. The song says, I can't stop. Praise in his name. I, I, I want to ask some of y'all, when y'all going to stop? Praise him. You can't stop until you stop. You got to start praising him before you stop praising him. He deserves your praise this morning. That's the only reason we're here today. Because of his name and what he's done for us. So we ain't going to stop praising his name. His name is Jesus. Amen, amen. God bless you, choir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You know what? You know what, y'all? I think today of all days in the Christian calendar is the day that we ought to come to praise his name. Because it had not been any resurrection, there would be no praise of God. But because of the resurrection, we are able to come to praise his name now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, now Jay, Jalen, Jalen, stay, stay right there. Give me, give me a little bit. Can't stop. Praise his name. Just play it, just play that right there for me. Come on, come on. Play it, play it, play it. There you go. Let's play it. Now, now, listen, listen. I, I need y'all to help me this morning. Because if we came to have church, and some of y'all ain't been in church in a long, long time, and you ought to be at least excited that you made it through the pandemic to at least be in church. So, so I'm, I'm going to see how y'all do. You see, that, that there, there are some girls that when I was dancing, I wouldn't take them with me to the dance floor because I knew they didn't know how to dance. But, but then there were some girls I wanted them to be with me on the floor because I knew that they knew how to dance. And, and therefore, we didn't care about how long the song went, Maurice. We just want the song to keep on going because we didn't want to stop praising. So I, I, I'm going to see which one of y'all, who, who in the place today really want to praise the Lord. Oh, okay, come on. Here we go. Can't stop. Praising his name, y'all stand up for you. Stop praising his name, my just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Come on, just can't stop. Come on, yeah, I just can't stop. You don't know what he's done for me. You were not there. 
and you don't know where. What the Lord has done for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Time to have a little church, y'all. I, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but it's time to have church today. Give God your best praise. Give him your best praise. He gave his best when he gave his son Jesus to us. That we may have eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I know, I know. I I, I, I understand. Thank you. Sometimes. If you just come on and let go and, and let God have his way, you'll feel better. Some of y'all going through some stuff right now. You're just going and praise your way through it. Because praise, I told you a few weeks ago, praise will liberate you. Your praise will set you free. Huh? Your praise will lift you through your circumstance. If you just give God praise. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, listen. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. You got, you got a Bible? Y'all got a Bible with y'all today? Did you bring a Bible to church? If you didn't bring one, there's one in the pew you can use today. Let's look at why we're here today. From Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. You got a Bible? Get, get your Bible. Tell you why we're here today. From Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. And if you find it, come on, stand on your feet. I'm just going to change service all up today. Let the Holy Spirit lead. You can't go wrong when the Holy Spirit leads you. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 1. I'm going to read from the NIV, the New International Version today. This is Christian week. This is the week for believers. Something astonishing happened on Friday. Yes. But something really, really amazing happened on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. And because of what happened on Friday and what happened on Sunday, mm -hmm. it what causes us to gather every week. Yes. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verse number 1. It says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. Amen. He is not here. Yeah. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. That's why we're here, y'all. Amen. Because Amen. he got up. Yes. And he had already said he was going to get up. And he told them, where well, you will see me. Amen. And they went to see him. And they found him where he said he would be. Amen. That's why we are here. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. I want to remind you why we're here. Sometimes we forget we just come to church because we normally come to church. No, 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 no. We come to church because he got up. That's why we come. And he gave us a promise like he promised them. You'll find me. That's why the Bible says if you seek, you'll find me. Reverend Ross, if you come this morning, won't you come? Lead us in prayer this morning. Because if anybody, if nobody else ought to pray, Christians ought to pray. And we got to pray without ceasing. Every day you look on the news, there's somebody being shot in some city. 
And Norfolk is on the news too much. It's on the news too much to have as many churches as we have around. If we pray, we can shake up the atmosphere that God will move on our behalf. Pray, Reverend. Father God, we come to you this morning to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for yet another opportunity, Father God, to come before you. Father God, we thank you this morning. Father God, although this is altar call, we want to take this time to remember the week, the week leading up to the day. The week that our Savior was beaten. The week that our Savior was crucified. The week where he was hung on a cross. But Father, we thank you because we know that the cross was there, that the nails was in his feet, the nails was in his arms, in his hands. But we know that the, it wasn't the nails that held him on the cross. Yeah. We know that it wasn't uh, anything but love. It was love for sinners like you and me. So we thank you this morning. We know, Jesus, you could have come down, but you didn't. And we thank you for that. We thank you for loving us enough to go through what you went through. We thank you this morning. We thank you for Friday, where they laid you in a tomb. We thank you for Saturday, yes. where you laid there in that tomb. We thank you for the third day, the day that we're here today to say thank you. We thank you for getting up. We thank you, Lord, for being with us and loving us enough to Go to the cross for us, for our sins. We thank you. We just thank you this morning, Jesus. Because if it had not been for you, where would we be now? We thank you this morning, Jesus. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for never leaving us. For you say you would never leave us nor forsake us. And we thank you for that. Lord, as we commemorate this day, this Sunday morning, we just thank you this morning. We, if I had 1,000 tongues, if I had a million tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. We just thank you for the cross. So right now, we just ask you to have your way in this place. Father God, as we go through this service, we ask you to have your way with the preacher this morning. Touch him in a mighty, mighty way that your word will be preached this morning. But not only preached this morning, that it would touch hearts. That it would move in each and every one of us this morning. That we would not only be hearers of the word, but we would be doers of your word. So we thank you this morning. Right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you and love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We, you, Jesus. we, you, Jesus. we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
for not coming down off that cross. We just thank you this morning, Jesus. We praise your name this morning. We lift you up this morning. Just be with us, Father, as we go through this day and every day, as we praise your name. In Jesus' most holy and precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Just for me. Just for me. Jesus came and did just for me. Thanks, God. Bless the Lord this morning with your hands. Put your hands together and bless the Lord this morning. We did it just for, just for me. Amen. Amen. Come on. This welcome this morning will be given by one of the most exciting ladies that I know here in Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. We call her Miss B, Miss Bernice. Come on, Miss Bernice. And with all that joy and excitement you got on the inside of you. Sometimes she excites me and get me nervous. God bless you. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. Now, I'm not going to be like Miss Bernie. So I'm going to use my mic. <laughs> I'm going to use my mic. There may be somebody here this morning. This is your first time being here. Stand. This is your first time being here. First time. First time. 
visitors? Okay, all right. Everybody has been here at least one time or more. We're just grateful to have you here with us on this morning. And we praise God's blessings upon you. And that we ask God to continue to bless you in your journey. And whether you're here this morning for your second time and third time or whatever, if you're not a member of Mount Lebanon, we open the doors of our church to you that you can come to be a part of our church family here at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. We would love to have you to come to be a part of the family of God. So God bless you and thank you to all those who are visiting this morning, to all our members. Some of you we haven't seen since the beginning of COVID on 2020. We're grateful for you being here on today. Thank you for wearing your mask. Thank you for being obedient, coming in and getting your temperature checked and uh, allowing them to try to keep us safe because we want to be safe. We do realize the pandemic's still going on. But I pray that you've gotten your vaccines and hoping that if you do get the virus, the virus won't take you out. And if you know somebody that hasn't gotten the vaccine, tell them, please encourage them, get the vaccine because we all want to be safe. Amen. So God bless each of you and welcome to Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Just a few announcements this morning. So just a few announcements this morning. I'm going to ask you to bear with me. Um, Deaconess Tamika Johnson, who's in charge of our women's ministry, is asking everybody, all the ladies, if they would sign up for the Rainbow Tea, which will be on May the 21st at noon time here at the church. Um, and she's, there's a sign-up sheet over here on the bulletin board. Sign up there. There are T-shirts that will be made available for you. The t-shirts are $12. The color is pastel. And she's also on the board. You can put your size uh, there also on the bulletin board right there. The deadline for the t-shirts is May the 8th. Please sign up and pay your money for the t-shirts by May the 8th. The ticket for the rainbow tea is $7. And she's asking that you would see Sister Veronica Moore, Sister Rhonda Ross, Sister Gloria Cole, Sister Laverne Carr or either Sister Shirley Strowman to purchase your tickets. And she's also asking that you would invite a guest. Invite a guest. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add to this, Tamika. I'm going to add this right here. For those ladies right now, if you're going to come, invite a guest and pay for it. It's only $7, y'all. Only $7. Invite a, invite a guest and pay, pay, pay their ticket for them and say, come on and go with me. You can be blessed. You can be blessed if you just go with me. Amen? Yeah. Hey, amen, amen. This morning, I'm also, do, do want to say, if the iPad will act right this morning, I want to say to you that I'm so grateful for those of you who were faithful during the Lenten season, that each Wednesday we were asked to fast, and many of you were faithful, and I want to say thank you for being faithful, for joining us in fasting. I know somebody will probably say, well, I'm not going to fast. Pastor, that's, <clears throat> that's old-timey. That's just Bible. Yeah, let me tell you something. You ought to fast sometimes because Jesus says there are some things that will not change except by fasting and praying. Amen. See, when the little boy came and they couldn't get the demon out of him, Jesus, the disciples wanted to know how come we couldn't do it. He says there are some things that won't happen until you fast and pray. And there are some things happening in America will not change until we learn to fast as well as pray. Join us because we will continue to pray on each Monday and Friday morning at 7 a.m. on our conference call. Those who are on our prayer list, we call the names out and we pray for the names on our list. So you can join us on Mondays on Friday morning on our prayer call. Wednesday evening at 6 30 we do Bible study over the phone. You can join us for Bible study on Wednesday. If you're giving and you don't write checks or you don't pay in cash, we have several ways that you can give. Um, you can give by using your smartphone. Uh, just text 73256 and put in MLBC and hit send and it'll prompt you there how to give. Or you can go to our website, mlbcnorfolk.com. Go over to resources, and it'll prompt you how to give right there. 
so you can give unto the church. You know, some of us are still old-fashioned. We like cash. We still write checks. But the young folks don't do that. Is that right? <laughs> amen, amen. The young folks know that. Pastor, we don't do that. We got a card. We got a card. We can do our card. Praise God for you. Praise God for you. Going to turn the choir loose, y'all. Let the choir sing. We're going to preach. And we're going to come around the table this morning. Because that's what it's all about. It's about fellowship. Us coming around the table. So as the choir comes and sings, I'll come back with the word this morning. Are you praying for me this morning? Yes. Pray yes. for me this morning. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Pray, yes. pray for me. Come on, choir, sing. You can sing for at least an hour if you like. <laughs> Go ahead and sing.
What did he do? He decided told y'all, y'all could sing for about an hour. I could stood some more of that. Amen. 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 Praise be unto our God. So good to see several of you I haven't seen in a long, long time that you're here today. Amaya, thank you for bringing your grandmama to church today. I praise God for that. Appreciate it. I'll see you after church, Amaya. Give you your $2 for bringing her to church today. Amen. Amen. So grateful for each of you being here on this day. Bow your heads and let's get started. Come on, y'all. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. God, no other help I know. Lord, if you would withdraw yourself from me, where shall your servant go? So ask me again, Lord knocking on heaven's door saying open the door that your servant may come face to face with you that I may hear your voice welcoming in me so this morning is preaching time so come in let your spirit rest on me that I may do thy blessed will that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart let it be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. From the scripture that we read earlier from Mark's gospel, chapter 16, let me pick up at verse number 8 and just read a few verses after that and we'll try to put it all together for you this morning. Mark's gospel, chapter 16, I'm going to pick up at verse number 8. We read up to verse 7, verse 8. From the NIV, Mark says, Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. Uh, they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Praise be unto God for the reading of his word. I want to talk this morning on this Resurrection Sunday morning from the subject, God's got your back. God's got your back. He's got your back. For those of us as believers in Jesus Christ and been coming to church for some period of time, if you've ever read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, the Gospels appear to read in a form of like a newspaper, like a modern-day newspaper. When you look at Matthew's Gospel, Matthew contains the announcements and advertisements. Matthew announces that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Flip over and look at Mark's Gospel. Mark's gospel carries what we would call the headline. Mark, you know, I realize that when you're reading the newspaper, the headline is always in bold print. The headline is the first thing that we want to look at when we look at a newspaper. 
The headline in Mark's gospel will say to you and I today, he says, Behold, the Savior is here. Behold, my servant, Jesus the Christ. But then when you go over to Luke's gospel, Luke has the, what we would call the special features section. Because Luke alone records the songs connected with the birth of Christ. He gives us the story of the Good Samaritan and the story of the prodigal son. But then when you flip over and you read John's gospel, John has what we will call the editorial section. Because John writes about the bread of life. He writes about the true vine. And talks to us about how Christians ought to live. That's the newspaper version right there when you read the gospel. It reads like a modern-day newspaper. But Reverend Ross, there's something I learned about reading newspaper, and that simply is, is that you can read newspaper, and newspapers are like the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. But when you read a newspaper, Sharon Kaysen, you will never read a newspaper with all good news in it. Every newspaper's got some bad news in it. And this morning, we want to look at some bad news, but the good thing about it in the paper is some good news this morning. And I don't know about you, but I like hearing good news. I hear enough bad news every day of my life. This morning, the resurrection, this resurrection Sunday morning, and here Mark, in Mark's gospel, he comes at the last chapter of his gospel in chapter 16. And Mark wants to spotlight this morning in his story about some women, some women who are now going to the tomb. And these women, as Mark spotlight, puts a spotlight on them, is some women who've been loyal to the Lord while he lived. Now, this morning, they're on their way to a graveyard. and They're on their way to a graveyard not to embrace Jesus, but they're going to embalm Jesus. And as they are walking toward the grave, here it is this morning, they are, they are worrying out loud. They, they got some concerns, and their concerns this morning, as they're given to us, they, they're worrying out loud. And one of the things that they want to know it is about this stone. They're concerned about the size of the stone. Want to know because this stone has been rolled there to block the tomb. They're concerned about the seal on the stone. You see, the Roman seal was on the stone and nobody could remove the Roman seal unless you were a part of the Roman officials. They were concerned about the stone, the size of the stone, and the seal on the stone who would who would now take the seal off of it. But then they're concerned this morning about the soldiers around the stone. You see, there's a regiment of soldiers around the stone this morning because they want to be sure that Jesus doesn't get out of this tomb. But even though these women are worried about the stone, the good news this morning is that they keep on walking toward the stone. That, that their worry doesn't wither as they walk. You see, there are people who allow their panic to affect their progress. And, and as they panic and worry, they remain in the same place. L listen, if you're going to worry and, and panic, at least be on the move trying to go forward. Ain't no need of just sitting in the same place or standing in the same place. You ought to still at least probably be making your way going forward. You see, there are some folks here this morning has been worried about some things, and because you're worried, it's hindering your progress. There are some, of, some people who may want to go back to school because they long to get that piece of paper, but, but, they are, but fear stops their flight. There may be somebody here this morning who wants to love again. But a previous divorce has stopped your desire to love again. You see, fear can keep you from going forward. But, but what these women discovered this morning is what they had a hang-up about had already been handled. Priest Bobby. What they had a hang-up about has already been handled. 
that they, they are fearing about what they're going to see when they get to the tomb. Do, do you know what fear is? Fear, fear simply is false evidence appearing real. That, that, that's all fear really is. And fear does not come from God. Because in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You can't let fear stop you. You see, the more fear you have, the less faith you have. And the more faith you have, the less fear you will have. You ought to tell somebody this morning that I got to get some faith. I, I got to stop being afraid and I got to get some faith because if you get some faith, even though you have a little fear, at least your faith will keep you moving forward to where you're trying to get to. You can't get to your destination standing in the same place, worrying about what it's going to be like when you get down the road. No, baby girl, get on walking by faith and understand that when you move by faith God can open up doors God can move mountains when you move by faith God can make that which seems impossible possible if you move by faith watch this here it is this morning these women are moving by faith even though there's some fear on the inside of them but, but this morning Here's some good news about these women. That there's some good news this morning in the text about these women. Because first of all, what these, the good news that these women discovered this morning from the text, first of all, is that the stone had already been rolled back. Stone there in verse number four has already been rolled back. Well, what, what are you saying, Reverend? What I'm saying this morning is the barrier had now been removed. The very thing that they was worried about, God had already taken care of that for them. You see, here is the relevance of the, of the resurrection this morning. The relevance of the resurrection this morning is that whatever barrier that was blocking your blessing has been removed. Okay, 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 okay. Let, let, let me get to you again. The relevancy of the resurrection this morning is whatever barriers that had been blocking you has now been removed. You see, the door has now been opened because of the resurrection because we now have access. Please, Bobby. We have now have access to get to the holy of holies this morning. How, how, how you know that, Reverend? I, I know it because if you read Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Romans 5 and 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, that for that all have sinned. Well, because of the resurrection, sin has been taken care of. We now have access to go in on the inside. So Hebrews 4 and 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. What are you saying, Reverend? What I'm saying now is that after the resurrection, the veil of the temple was split and now gives us access because we are priests within ourselves now and we can go behind the veil, the holy of holy, because God has now given us access to get to where we want to get to. The barrier had been removed. Let me see, can I make this live for you? Well, the barrier had been removed. When I went to a new, a new shipbuilding, I was applying for a job, Chuck. When I applied for the job in, the, in computer operation, they, they, they took me on an interview. And on the interview, they, 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 they walked me to the computer room. But when we got to the computer room, I couldn't go in, Cynthia, because th th there was this thing on the door that you needed to swipe in order to get on the inside. But I, Adrena, I did not have anything to swipe to get on the inside. But the guy with me that was showing me around had something that he could swipe. That the door, when he swiped it, the door opened up and he let me go in with him and we looked around. But later on, when I applied for the job and they gave me the job, they gave me a 
that they gave me a swipe card too. So now when I want to go now in the computer room, I don't need him to go with me with me because I have, have my own card and I go to the door and, and I just swipe it. Well, can I tell somebody this morning? Listen, this morning I want to tell somebody that when the devil had you right where he wanted you to be, you use your you use your swipe card that gave you access to the kingdom of God and God answered your prayer because you had access. That which hindered you, that blocked you, has now been removed. The barrier has now been removed because you now have access. The women could not go in at first because they thought the stone was there, but the stone now has been rolled away. That's good news this morning. But, but here is the second part of the good news this morning, Gloria, from the text, is, is that not only had the stone been rolled back, but they found out that the Savior had risen. Savior had risen. That's good news this morning. Well, Pastor, why is that good news? That, that's good news from, this morning from the text is because, because these women showed up with hope that had been halted. These women showed up with faith that had failed them. These women showed up with belief that had vanished. They showed up with dreams that had been destroyed. They showed up with hearts that were heavy. But the good news of this morning is that when they got there and the Savior had risen, the good news is that there was an angel there that they came in contact with. Ah, can I tell somebody this morning that God knows when to give you an, an angelic assistance. God knows when to give you an angelic assistance because God knows what you need even before you know what you need. And the good thing this morning, Miss Mary, is that God has several kinds of angels to do his bidding for him. And what I like about that, Lucy, is because whatever situation I have, God knows what angel to send my way. And I'm glad about that this morning, that, that God doesn't have to send the same angel because if he only had one angel, that angel might be busy on an assignment for somebody else when I need that angel. But the good news is that God has several kinds of angels that God sends to assist you when you need assistance. What are you saying, Reverend? Let me, let me, let me show you what, what God has. Well, what God has this morning. No, no, number one, God has some working angels. Everybody say working angels. God has some working angels. Psalm 91 verse 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. In other words, God has some angels that work on my behalf. But, but, but then God has some worshiping angels. Everybody say worshiping angels. He's got some worshiping angels. Isaiah 6 and 3 says, and one cried out, meaning one angel cried out and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. God's got some angels that all day long, all they do is worship him. That, that's why you ought to hunt your neighbor this morning and tell your neighbor, God don't need your praise. Because God got praise in heaven going on all day long. So if you don't want to praise him and you don't want to worship him, God's got some worship in heaven going on all day long. God's got some working angels and God got some worshiping angels. But then God's got some warring angels. He got some warring angels. Revelation 12 and 7 says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Well, I want to tell somebody this morning that, that, that you got to be careful who you mess with. You got to be careful who, who you mess with. Because John the Revelator says in Revelation that your foes will fall without you fighting. God's got some angels that will fight on your behalf if you just have faith and trust in him that whatever situation you find yourself in, if you need a war and a fighting angel, God will send him to your place. 
But then lastly, this morning we come to the text. God not only has some working angels, some worshiping angels, and some warring angels, but God has some witnessing angels. Here it is in verse number five, right there we just read. The Bible says that the women went into the tomb, and there on the right side they saw a young man. Really he was an angel dressed in white sitting there. And the angel gave them some good news. What was the good news, Pastor? Well, well, he witnessed to them. And his witness to them, he told him who Jesus was, who Jesus has, who Jesus is. Let me just give it to you. He, he said he let them know that Jesus was crucified. Jesus has risen. And Jesus is the one that, that, that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That's good news this morning. Because I want to tell somebody the good news is that the stone that was blocking your access has been removed. And the Savior that, that you wanted to embrace is now available for you to embrace him because you don't need to embalm him because he's not dead. He's alive. You only embalm dead folks, but you don't need to embalm Jesus because Jesus is alive. Well, let me go this morning because this morning here it is good news it's good news here in the text good news for the women stone has been rolled back good news is savior has now risen but then thirdly here is the good news for me i don't know about you but this is the good news for me this morning john the good news for this me this morning is not only was the stone rolled back. Not only was the Savior risen, but the good news, Keisha, is now that sinners can be restored. That, 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 that's the good news for me this morning. That, that, that sinners now can be restored. What, 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 what do you mean? What do you see that, Reverend? It's in verse 7. We read verse 7. Verse, verse 7 says that the angel told the women. He says, now go and tell his disciples. And, y'all didn't read it, did you? Go tell his disciples and, okay, you still, some of y'all still ain't got it. Go, go tell his disciples and, thank you very much, and Peter. He emphasized Peter. Now, Mark's gospel is the only gospel writer that includes Peter's name in there. He says, be sure you go tell Peter, because Peter had messed up before Jesus died. Well, listen, his name really is Simon. It's really not Peter. His name is Simon. But, but folks didn't know if, if he would act like Simon or if he would act like Peter. So they called him Simon Peter. <laughs> they, they, they called him Simon Peter because wherever they were, they didn't know if Peter was going to laugh or he was going to cuss. So they called him Simon Peter. Well, there are three things this morning you got to know about Peter. And I'll let you go. And number one, we look at Peter this morning, is that Peter was a dedicated disciple. He was dedicated to following Jesus. There were very few, very few places that Jesus went that Peter didn't go with him. As a matter of fact, when Jesus went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter went up there with him. When he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, Peter was there with him. And when he went to Jairus' house to heal Jairus' daughter, he put everybody out of the room except for Peter, James, and John. You see, Peter was his ride or die. Peter was dedicated to the Lord. But not only was Peter dedicated to the Lord, but Peter was a defending disciple. You see, Peter was the one that when they came to arrest Jesus, Peter pulled out his blade and he cut the soldier's ear off. But Jesus picked it up and put it back on the man's ear because Peter was just trying to defend him. I, I, I don't know about you, but I need a Peter with me every now and then. Somebody that, that will defend me when I can't defend myself. Peter was a dedicated disciple. 
He was a defending disciple. But lastly, this morning, Peter was a denying disciple. Because John 21, Peter now tells the boys, I'm going fishing. I, I, I'm, a, I'm tired of this thing called ministry. And Peter takes the boys fishing because he wants to quit the ministry. But what the resurrection teaches us this morning is simply this, is that not only has a stone been rolled away, and not only has a Savior risen, but it tells me that backsliders can be restored. Well, the angel told the women that Jesus instructed them to go tell his disciples, but also tell Peter. That's good news this morning because what that tells me, Derek, is that when I mess up, God's got my back. I'm so glad this morning that, that when I fall down, God's got my back. I, I'm so glad this morning that, that I, I know that, that even when I'm down to the end of my life, God's got my back. Well, well I, I, I want to talk to somebody before I get out your way this morning is because some of y'all think you got it all together. Some of y'all think that, that, that you ain't never messed up and ain't never done anything wrong. Can I tell you something? You just fooling yourself and trying to fool folks around you because all of us have messed up one time or another. But the good news this morning, David, from the text is that God's got my back. That when I mess up, God's got my back. God knows how to pick me up when I mess up. And when I fall down, God's got my back. When I'm on the outside of the crowd, God's got my back. When I don't know what to do, God's got my back. When everybody else turned their back on me, God's got my back. Is there anybody here this morning got the good news from the text? I want to tell somebody that, listen, when you read the text, they included my name in the text. When he called Peter, well, that was my name. Because sometimes I don't know who I am. I, I might even fuss sometimes. I might even cuss sometimes. I might even lie sometimes. I might even almost want to die sometimes. But the good news is that I can be restored because God got my back. Well, I got to go now. But I want to tell somebody that us who are believers in Christ ought to put out an APB, an all points bulletin, to tell somebody there is a God that's got a son named Jesus. And if you're messed up, he will restore you. And as a matter of fact, you ought to tell somebody, we're going to put out a BOL. That's a... Be on the lookout. Because he's somewhere around. Just look out for it because he's not dead. He's alive. Is there anybody here this morning just want to tell somebody, I'm glad he's alive this morning. I'm glad this morning that he got up. Glad this morning somebody rolled the stone away. Glad this morning that he will restore me when I'm down. Glad this morning that when I don't know where to go, I got a God that I can go to. That will rescue me when I mess up, when I make mistakes. When I feel like I want to give up, I got somebody I can go to. But my question to you this morning is, do you have the good news? Do you know that he's alive? Well, you ought to tell somebody this morning, he's alive. And he wants to come to your house this morning. If you let him come, come on, stand, come on, stand, come on. If you want him to come in this morning. Because I don't know about you, I want him to come in this morning. Because look, if he restored me, he'll restore you. 
The sad part about Christianity is, is that all of us dress up to come to church to look right. But most of us ain't. Listen, somebody right where you are need to know your story. Your story is, I fell down, but he picked me up. And if he picked me up, he'll pick you up. I'm no better than you are. That's my story this morning. That from the uttermost to the guttermost, Jesus saves. Maybe somebody here this morning, you need saving. That's your story. You need saving. You need somebody that will hold your hand this morning, walk with you. You need to give your life to Jesus. Listen, you've been coming to church and God has been saying, I want to save you. But the devil at the same time been saying, don't go. Don't do it. I'm here this morning to tell you, you better do it now. Do it now. Give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ and let him live on the inside of you. See, when Jesus left, he left us the Holy Spirit that will comfort, keep, and guide us. And he wants to put it on the inside of you if you come and give your life to him. Is there one this morning want to come? Down, just come down the aisle. Just raise your hand if you don't want to come. I'll come to where you are. Because I want you to be saved. Because if you're not saved and you die, you die and you risk the losing your life. Dying, going to hell. Don't do it. Give your life to Jesus. You may be here this morning and you want to join the church. You don't have a church home. You've been searching. you already saved. The doors are open. You can come. Join with us here at Mount Lebanon. And we can worship together and praise God in harmony and in fellowship. Is there one this morning want to come? Every head bow, every head bow. Somebody's trying to make up their mind this morning. I know the person beside you is dressed up looking good today because it's what we call Easter Sunday. But you don't know what's happening on the inside of them. Some of them are so jacked up on the inside that if you could see their spirit on the inside, you would move from beside them. You need Jesus this morning to soothe you right where you are. Is there one who would come this morning? Come and give your life to Christ. If you're here this morning, you're not saved, just pray this prayer with me. Just say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I need you to come into my life. I repent of my sins and I believe in your son Jesus that he lived, he died was buried in the borrowed tomb but the third day morning he got up with all power in his hand come into my heart and, be, and live inside of me and I receive you Jesus as my Lord and my Savior if you just pray that simple prayer right there he'll come in but he's also asking you to be baptized so the world would know that you're one of his children. If that's you, you still got time to come. You've got time to come. Amen. God bless you. You may take your seats. Take your seats. We're grateful on this Resurrection Sunday morning that we can come, fellowship, be together. As I preached a few Sundays ago on first Sunday about communion, communion is not simply about you taking bread and drinking the juice and then going home and said you've done, you check the box and you're going home. Communion is about fellowship. It's about us coming around the table. That we come around the table, we fellowship one with the other. Because that's what Jesus did when he was with his disciples on that Thursday evening. It's Passover time. He fellowshiped with them. Let them understand. He had to go away. 
but he was coming back. But until he comes back, he says, do this in remembrance of me. So that's why we do this on first Sundays of each month and then on Resurrection Sunday. Because he says, do this in remembrance of me. What is this, Pastor? This is fellowship. We come around the table together to partake of the Lord's body and his blood until he comes back. He's coming back. He's coming back. This morning, here's what Paul says from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 Paul says for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the, on the night in which he broke which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this Whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Nigga Charles Johnson, why don't you come and pray over the elements this morning as we prepare ourselves to partake this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, we come as humble as we can around your table to commemorate the resurrection of your son, Jesus the Christ. Father God, I ask right now that you move in this place, that you move on your people, Lord, that you touch their hearts and minds, that you forgive us for anything that we've done knowingly and unknowingly. Now just have your way because this is in your son Jesus the Christ's name I pray. And the church say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask this morning if a Deacon will stay down. Stay down, Deacon. Deacon Shirley, why don't you come? Deacon, this will y'all come and line up across the front this morning. Of course, we do things a little different because of the pandemic. Normally, we would pass the plate and we go from hand to hand, but we give you the communion cup when you come in. I'm okay. Is there anybody that did not get the communion cup who, who needs one this morning? Anyone in the sanctuary? Just raise your hand if you didn't get it. We got some over here. Over to the right. your communion cup anyone who's watching by Facebook live this morning if you home you can take a piece of bread little cup of juice pray over it we have prayed over this because the word of God said that around the table Jesus didn't just give it to them. He said he gave thanks for it and he gave it to them. This is a sacred moment in the church. It's not something that we do lightly. It's 
not something that we ought to do just because we do want to do it. But we do it in remembrance of him. Because he says we ought to do this to remember him. So every time we come around the table, our minds ought to go back to Calvary. Not because this is Resurrection Sunday, but every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And our minds ought to go back to Calvary. Why, Pastor? It's because we should have been on the cross. But he took our place. But because he took our place, we're able now to come to remember him taking our place and not forsake what he's asked us to do. The Bible declares that after they were in the upper room on that day, so while they were around the table, they ate the Passover. And when he completed eating the Passover meal, the Bible says Jesus grabbed bread, broke a piece of it off. He lifted it up and he gave thanks. And he said to them, this is my body which was broken for you. Take ye and eat. The same manner, he grabbed a common cup of wine. He gave thanks for it. And he passed it to them. And he said, this is my blood, which was shed for the remission of sin. Take ye and drink. Drink all of it. Till I come again. The word of God said that they got happy and they sang a song. And they went out to the Mount of Olives. We don't go to the Mount of Olives because we don't have it to go to. But we go to our several homes and our communities. And we ought to spread the love of Jesus everywhere that we go. And you ought to let somebody know on this Resurrection Sunday that I'm here because I've got a Savior who died on my behalf. And I just celebrated him. Because of who he is. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Come on, trustees, if you would come this morning. Ushers, why don't y'all line up if y'all want to come this morning? Y'all got your white and your green on today looking pretty. Amen. All right. I'm going to let the ushers march today. Y'all want to march, ushers? Y'all, ushers, y'all marching? Y'all got the mask on your face. I can't tell what y'all want to do. They probably ain't even listening to me. Pastor, we ain't paying you no attention. i tell you one thing. Miss Bernice wanted to march. I can tell you that much. Nobody else want to march. Hmm. And Jalen better give us some good marching music, too. Huh? Amen. 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 What we're going to do is the ushers are going to march, and then we will take one side at a time to come. All right. Come on, ushers. Come on. Y'all march, ushers. March, march, ushers. All right. They ain't, march, they ain't march so long, they don't even have a step. Ah, no. I thought Lucy was going to march if nobody else marched. Can't stop praising his name. Amen, amen. That's all right. I'll get him next time. If you're on my left, come on, won't you stand? And the ushers will direct you from the rear, just on my left right now. Come on up and give this morning. Well, let's see if y'all march.
If you confess the Lord, call him up. If you confess the Lord, call him up. If you're on my right, if you would stand, if come from the rear. If you confess the Lord, call him up. If you believe in the Father, if you believe in the Father, the Son, and, and the Holy Ghost, call him up. for your presence here in the house of the Lord once again. We're so grateful to see some of you I haven't seen in a couple years. Thank you for being here today. I pray God's blessings upon you. I pray that you will remain safe. Keep your mask on. Keep your mask on if you can. I mean, if it gets a little too rough, just get away from everybody a little bit. Keep yourself safe. Keep everybody else safe. Amen. Amen. You do your part. God will do his part. Amen. Amen. If you hit my father, thank you now the time in which you've given us to share your word, the time that you've given us to fellowship one with the other. We pray right now, Father, that as we have given unto you today, we pray that you would receive our gifts. Then most of all, God, we pray that you would give us the wisdom and the understanding to how to use the gifts in which been given today. Bless now the gift and also bless the giver on this day. But then there may be somebody here this morning that didn't have what they wanted to give today. I pray you would bless them that in due time they will be able to come back to give what they would want to give unto you. Bless you abundantly because your word says you love a cheerful giver. Yeah. Now bless as only you can. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, who's able to present you faultless before his throne with exceedingly glad joy to the only wise God our Savior be dominion, power, majesty, now, henceforth, and forevermore, and all believers say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Go in peace. Go in peace. God bless you. Go in peace.